Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be talking about current beauty favorites. For a while I tried to do these every single month, but what I noticed was that I wasn't really finding new products that were amazing every month. So I found myself just talking about things that I had tried throughout the month, even if I didn't like particularly love them. So I'm doing these a lot less frequently because I really wanna recommend like the best of the best products for you guys. Only products that I wholeheartedly love and believe in are mentioned in these videos so I just find it easier if I do them less frequently it gives me more time to test things out I feel like you can't really determine if something's truly a favorite in just a month even though I have had a few of these less than a month there's a select few products that you can already tell that you're going to love like the first time you use it so there are a couple of those in here but a lot of these I have tested over and over and over and over time I've determined that I really do love these products so yeah I don't do these monthly anymore I just don't think that that's enough time to really determine a favorite. So yeah, this is going to be, maybe I'll do them like quarterly, but I don't really wanna put myself on a set schedule. I don't know, I'll just do these once in a while whenever I find a good group of products where I'm like, yeah. Those are some faves. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Hello friends, today's video is actually sponsored. I just wanna start off by saying thank you guys so much for putting me in a position where I can take a sponsorship or even be offered a sponsorship. Like that is amazing. This is my first YouTube sponsorship and I am so excited. So this video is sponsored by Fancy. Fancy is a beauty tool brand that is led by women who live by their own beauty standards. Today I will be talking about their Lana mirror which is my first favorite of today's video. This mirror has 10 times magnification and LED lights to avoid bad beauty lighting. So there, if you just push that button, it turns the mirror on. The LED lighting is dimmable, which is great so you can kind of customize your lighting situation based on your environment. Sometimes if I do my makeup in the bathroom, the lighting is way too yellow. So oftentimes I find that I don't match my foundation properly and then I'll go into natural lighting or sit in the car. You know how the visor mirrors are like the least flattering mirrors ever? And I will look and be like, wow, I am just two completely different colors. I think that this mirror would be absolutely perfect for travel now that the world is starting to open back up again. I don't have any travel plans, but I know that when I do, I'm definitely gonna be taking this with me. That's because I find when you travel and you're in a hotel, the hotel bathroom lighting is often fluorescent lighting, which really washes you out and makes you too pale. So then I apply way too much bronzer and blush. And then again, you get into a natural lighting environment and you're like, oh, I look like a clown. This is great. Also in hotel rooms, they have like really dark lighting and I find that I do one side of my face like they'll look like completely different sides because one is better lit than the other so this will completely avoid any of that it also has like a little suction so it will adhere to most flat smooth surfaces so that's fantastic you don't have to worry about like where you're gonna prop it up or anything because sometimes if you use like the mirror and eyeshadow palettes you have to like balance it on something and it becomes a whole thing so this mirror solves all of those bad beauty lighting problems and I am so excited about that so I'm not sure if I mentioned this but this is 10 times magnification so my favorite way to use it lately is to pluck my eyebrows because you can see every single hair and my mustache apparently I have a mustache I didn't even know but this mirror told me that I do so I had more than a few darker hairs and I can't believe I've been walking around like that my entire life so I've been plucking those now I know I'm not supposed to pick at any blemishes I have but it is so good for spotting blackheads. It's so good. Like I can see everything be prepared to see your face in a completely different light literally, I guess. You're just gonna find things on your face that you didn't even know you had. So though I'm talking about the Lana mirror today, they have a ton of different sizes and styles that could fit your needs. To get yours, you can visit fancy.com. I will link it in the description bar below. And to save some money, you can use the code KELSEY10 if you want. It is an affiliate link though. And thank you so much to Fancy for sponsoring me. I'm so excited and I really do love this product. So it was a fantastic fit and yeah. Anyways, on with the video. I guess I will start out with skincare first. I've talked about this in a few videos previously. I think it was my empties video that I mentioned this, but this is honestly probably my favorite product out of all of these. It's not the most fun, but it's definitely the most functional for me personally. This is the Paula's Choice Moisture Boost Hydrating Treatment Cream. This is for normal to dry skin, and I use this as an eye cream. This is the only eye cream, or cream I guess, I can use without irritating my eye area. 
area. So what I do is I just take a little bit of this and I put it on a Q-tip and I just use that to put the product around my eyes. I have a hard time getting it to my inner corners with my nails. So this is a non-irritating, fragrance-free, never tested on animals formula. And I just, I love this. I can't speak enough good things about it. I have a dry eye area. I have oily skin, so I don't use this very often on like my entire face. Once in a while I will, if I feel like I need a little extra hydration boost, but for every day, I just don't need this kind of moisture, but my eye area does. I also read on Paula's Choice that you don't actually need an eye cream if you have a solid moisturizer. And that's what this is for me. Eye creams are just tiny moisturizers, just marketed for your eye area, but your eye skin is actually no different than the rest of your face skin. It's just a lot thinner. So I guess it is a little different, but what'll work on your overall face skin will also work on your eye area as long as it's like not irritating. And I found that the options at Sephora, they didn't really irritate my eye area, but they would irritate my eyes. My eyes would just water. A lot of them had fragrance, so that wasn't helpful around the eye area. And I found that my eyes would just water so much to the point where I would just completely wash off any product that I had on my eyes. So this is definitely great for that because it doesn't do any of those things. And it's the only product, the only one I tell you that has never done that for me. Actually, this one and the next one I'm gonna talk about. This is the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus Hyaluronic Acid Surface Hydration Formula. This is really good as well. It's also only $7 for the big bottle at Sephora. I think actually closer to $8, but like still, that's amazing. This product also does not irritate my eye area when I wear it, but that being said, uh, it's definitely not as hydrating as the Paula's Choice option, so that's why I really like this particular moisturizer for summertime. Hi. Yeah. Are you a product favorite? Are you a favorite, Deb? You're the best birthday gift I ever got. That's what you are. Hmm, you're not happy, are you? No. Debbie is also a favorite. She definitely contributes to my beauty routine, even though she's a little chunky. I'm gonna get you on a diet, girlfriend. So yeah, I can't really remember where I was. Debbie kind of distracted me, but this product is fantastic for the summertime. My skin really likes it. Doesn't irritate my eyes either. If my eye area doesn't feel as dry, I will also take this product on a Q-tip and kind of just moisturize my eye area. I find this is a great daytime moisturizer. The Paula's Choice is a little thick for me for daytime, so this is great. Also a great daytime eye cream. And yeah, overall, I just, I really love this product. This is a repurchase from me. I think I also mentioned this in my empties video. And yeah, I really enjoy this. I would repurchase this over and over again. And I actually have. I've repurchased the Paula's Choice and the Ordinary Moisture moisturizer multiple times. This one's kind of skincare, but like not really. I use this as a primer. This is by 43 Beauty. It's the coconut face milk. I've also been using the strawberry papaya face milk. I think all of the face milks really act the same, honestly. Pick one where you like the color or you think you'll like the scent or whatever, because they honestly feel all the same to me and it feels like they do the same thing. So I've just been going through the ones that I have in my collection. This one is obviously the coconut one. This one is the strawberry papaya one. I keep this one in my makeup bag. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm about maybe like a third of the way through this product. So I'm just trying to work through the both of these. I like to use them as a primer, especially with more matte foundations. I found that the face milk pairs really nicely with the Too Faced Born This Way matte. So if you have this foundation and you enjoy it, but sometimes you feel like it's a little too matte, maybe use this as a primer. It's fantastic. It's affordable. It does have fragrance though. So if you are sensitive to that, maybe steer clear of this one. They should just do like a plain face milk, just unscented face milk. I feel like that would go over very well because a lot of people have scent sensitive Activities. But yeah, this little duo has definitely been a favorite, but this more in particular, I use it with almost every foundation. It also works great with the Beauty Blender foundation that I talk about all the time. I didn't want to include that in this video because I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I just, I love the Beauty Blender foundation and this pairs really nicely with that as well. Speaking of foundation, I want to talk about one. It's the one that I'm wearing today. I actually don't use the face milk with this product because this product is already very glowy. I'm wearing it today and as you can see, like that's not all highlighter, that is also very much glow from the foundation. It's the Liss Beauty Triple Fix Serum Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid, Turmeric, and I still can't say this, ashwagandha. Someone told me how to pronounce it, but I forget. I have the memory of an actual goldfish. So yeah, I got this. I did a review on it. I'll link it in the cards up above, but I didn't want to call it a favorite right away, but I really did enjoy it when I tried it out. The more I try this foundation, the more I like it. Honestly, would I use it in the summer? Probably because it is a little bit dark, but yeah, you know what? This would be a good summer foundation if you like the glowy look. The only concern is how long it's gonna last in the summer. But that being said, when I did my wear test on this, it wore really well and I don't have any issues with wear with this foundation, but since it is so glowy, it kind of makes me 
wonder a little bit how it's gonna hold up if I like sweat or something. So I guess I'll test it out and see, but I just love this foundation. It's very glowy as you can see. It's about medium coverage. It's just really nice. My skin feels really good when I wear this. I don't feel the need to set it with powder. I just think it's really pretty. It's a really pretty glow. Like it's not overly luminous. Like I don't feel weird. I don't feel like a disco ball. I just feel very pretty and glowy and hydrated. So yeah, this is a definite favorite product. It goes in the lineup of my favorite foundations, which is great because the foundations that I usually like are either demi matte or matte finishes. So this one kind of adds a little bit of finish diversity in my favorites lineup. I find that glowy foundations usually look pretty awful on me and this one doesn't this one looks fantastic so this is definitely my favorite glowy foundation been loving it lately okay what else do we have here mm, still quite a lot i want to mention my milk makeup bronzer what is this called matte bronzer stick in the shade baked i wish they came out with more shades of this they only have two we need to start a petition for milk to launch more shades because i love 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 this formula it's amazing the only thing is this color is a little bit orange i'm wearing it today it's just a little bit orange for me right now, maybe in the summertime, it'll look a lot nicer. I used this on my best friend. She is half Chinese, so she has a lot of olive undertones in her skin, but she's also decently fair right now because who's going out to the beach in a pandemic? Not us Canadians here in Ontario, we are trapped in the house. So she's very fair right now, definitely darker than me, but that's not saying much, um, but she has a lot of olive undertones in her skin and I thought this looked absolutely beautiful on her, but it does look a little orange if you're super pale. So milk, please. If you're watching this, which I know you're not, but if you ever do, please launch more shades. That would be the launch of the decade. Mm, that's a bold statement. That would be the launch of the summer, that'd be great, thanks. But yeah, finish is absolutely beautiful. Again, wearing it today, I feel like around the forehead area, it just looks so good. Cheekbones, you can definitely see where it pulls more orange, so it's not my favorite on the cheekbones, but like, I still use it, so. This has definitely been a favorite, I just wish they released more shades. But this, in the summertime, I already know, is going to be my jam. Another cheek product, this is by Tower 28. You guys probably knew that this was coming if you watch my videos consistently. It's the Beach Please Luminous Tinted Balm. It's for the cheeks and the lips. I personally like it on the cheeks only, and this is in the shade Power Hour. At first, I was like, holy crap, this is super dark, but it's really beautiful. I got it in a little set during the Sephora sale, and I thought it was gonna be so, freaking pigmented and it does have pigment you can definitely build it up but it does sheer out like this is me shearing it out and as you can see it's just got this beautiful luminosity and it's a really beautiful shade especially for summer i feel like it's kind of like the perfect sun-kissed shade because it has a little bit of that brown to it it's like a brownie peach and that just like kind of gives off the perfect sun-kissed vibes I just feel like these are super glowy. They're very blendable. They looked a little weird on my lips, so I don't know if I'd recommend using them on your lips. I mean, obviously you can go ahead and like test it out, see if you like it, but for me personally, I didn't. It just emphasized a lot of texture I had on my lips and I always have texture on my lips, so those kinds of products that really emphasize that texture just aren't good for me. But this on the cheeks, I'm wearing it today. Just chef's kiss. So beautiful, so incredibly blendable. Unscented, same with the um, bronzer. Yeah, it kind of smells like Play-Doh a little bit but like it doesn't have like any added fragrance. So yeah, I really, really love this product. Would highly recommend if you have an opportunity to test it out or swatch it in store. I don't think we're doing swatching in store still, but if you have the chance to, I'd recommend it. They're very pretty. I really like Tower 28 as a brand. They are really killing it for me. I can't wait to see what they come out with in the future. Another cheek product. We have a lot of cheek products in this video. This is by e.l.f. and this is the, I don't even remember what these are called. Bite Size Cheek Duo maybe. It says Rouge and Highlight but that's not what the product's called. I don't really know. I'm gonna go with Bite Size Cheek Duo. This is a powder product, so even though I've been liking creams, I do still enjoy a good powder, blush, and highlight. So this is in the shade Cantaloupe. This is the blush swatch right here. It's not very pigmented, but I really like how it looks. I feel like it just adds like a different aspect to blush because it is like a really light orange. I wouldn't even call it a peach. Like it hardly has any pink to it. It's very much yellow, but yeah, I think it's a really interesting blush color, but not interesting interesting in the sense where it's like unflattering. And this highlight is just really beautiful. I really like that as well. It's nothing too crazy, but it's very 
pretty as well. This cheek duo I think was like $4, something crazy like that. And I really have been getting quite a bit of use out of this. So yeah, I would highly recommend this product. It's great. And if you don't like it, then you're only out four bucks. So that's amazing. They have a range of tones too. Let me see how many shades they have. So I just looked, they have eight shades. I think this is like the best option for fair skin. I wish they did have like one with more of a pink blush and then maybe like more of an icy highlighter. I don't know. I feel like that would be really pretty, but nonetheless, eight shades, still great. And yeah, can't really go wrong. It's a great price, great formula, great shade range. It's just great. I feel like my forehead's getting a little bit shiny. So I'm just gonna do one of these. This is the Urban Decay uh, Stay Naked to Fix Foundation Powder in the shade 10NN. I really like this. This is probably another product I could call a favorite. Um, I really like it. I think it's really nice. I've had this product for like probably over a year now. I think, and I really enjoy it. I think it's really nice. It's the perfect powder to just like kind of blot. I feel like it doesn't take away too much of that shine. Like I still wanna look a little bit glowy, but just not overly shiny. I just feel like this achieves that. I also use it to set my brow bone when I'm doing eyeshadow. I just have so many uses for this powder and I really enjoy the formula. It's not the most full coverage, I will say, but that's not really what I'm looking for in a powder personally. So yeah, I would definitely say that that's kind of a favorite as well. Ooh, this is a newfound favorite. I used to love this. And then I kind of like took a break from it, but it was still floating around in my makeup bag. And a couple of weeks ago, I was like, hmm, I haven't used that in a while. Let's use it. And oh my gosh, fell in love with it all over again. This is, oh God, it's so dirty. The Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade Highlight 01. It's just a mini. This is like probably six or seven years old at this point. So uh, I've had it for way too long. I'm almost done it, thank goodness. But I'm definitely gonna get a full size. I just find that this is such a beautiful powder for highlighting. I'm wearing it on my cheekbones today. It's not too crazy. Well, it looks pretty blinding there actually. I feel like though it looks very skin-like, like it doesn't look powdery on my skin. Like I'm not out here communicating with aliens with this highlighter on, if that makes sense. So yeah, I really like it. I think it's really beautiful and I will definitely be getting a full size because this, chef's kiss, if you're fair, Oh, beautiful. I wish they came out with more shades. Again, what is with these brands only releasing like two shades? Oh, I lied, they have four shades. That's pretty good, honestly. Maybe I'll get some for my kit, cause like, so pretty. So yeah, they have four shades and I would highly recommend it. It's a really nice highlighting powder. Um, it says that it's just like a matte radiance powder. Like it doesn't specify that it's a highlighter. I wouldn't use it as like a setting powder. It's very, very shimmery. So I don't know if I'd recommend it as that. But for a highlighter, oh, so pretty. I'm definitely getting a full size once this runs out. Hopefully it runs out soon, it's so old. Okay, now I wanna move on to eyes and then we can do lips and then we'll be done. So first off, I have two eyeshadow palettes that I wanna talk about that I've been getting a lot of use lately. The first one is the ColourPop Lemoncello. Who would have known? Honestly, not me. I wouldn't have guessed that this is like my summer eyeshadow palette, but it's definitely appearing as such. This is just so pretty and summery. I don't know, I just really like it. I've been getting a lot of use out of it lately. I just find that it's got all of those warm browns that I've been wanting for every day. And I can like switch up the lid shade. If I wanna have some more fun, I could do yellow or green or like a bright orange. But if I wanna keep it a little more natural, I have, you know, like a shimmery cream or something more like this that's like a bronzy duochrome. I've just been having a lot of fun with this palette. I've been using it quite a bit. I use this one for liner very often. No complaints here. It's been serving me really well. I really enjoy it. Next up, this product is not very old at all. I just posted a review on it. I'll link it in the cards up above. Uh, you probably see this coming, but it's the Natasha Denona Zendo. Love it. Love her formula. I really like the cream to powder in a lot of these. I believe these two teal shades are cream to powder, this coral, and then this deep brown. So I really got an opportunity to test out those cream to powder shades, and I really do like them. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. I'm wearing the shade Balance right here and the shade Yama down here. It's just a two color eyeshadow look, and I really enjoy it. Everything's super blendable, really inspired by the color story, even though I've had this for a couple weeks. I really enjoy looking at it and being like, mm, what am I gonna do today? Who knows? I just feel like it's very versatile, and I've just been getting a lot of use out of it, and I've been really enjoying it. So it's definitely a favorite already because I knew going into it that I really liked Natasha Denona's formula and then the color story also just really spoke to me. So I've been having a great time playing with this palette and I would definitely recommend it if you have a little bit of extra coin to spend because it's not cheap. This is like 89 Canadian dollars, holy crap. 88 maybe, something like that. It's crazy expensive and honestly, probably not worth it. They're good, but are they that good? 
Honestly, yeah, I don't know. I just really like it. I was talking with one of my followers the other day about how Huda Beauty palettes are really up there in price as well. Like I think they're approaching the $70 mark for Huda Beauty palettes and that is a formula that is not worth it. This, on the other hand, I think is really unique, especially the cream to powders. I've never really tried anything like it, and I love her shimmers. I just, I really like it all. So I do think it's worth it, but it's definitely not necessary. Like, if you don't have the money, don't go run out and buy this, you know what I mean? Like, ColourPop will suffice if you're tight on money, that's for sure. But I do think it's unique. I do love the color story. I do love the formula. So overall, I have been really, really enjoying it. Next up, we have a mascara, and this is by Ilia. It is the Limitless Lash Mascara. I didn't expect to love this as much as I did. I purchased this during the Sephora sale about a month back, a little over a month. I had a gift card and I wanted to spend it all in one purchase. And I had a couple things in my cart that I was really set on and I needed something that was under $20 in order to like round out my cart so I could use the entire gift card in one purchase. And this was the only thing that I was even relatively interested in that was under $20. And I'm so happy that I picked it up. At first I was thinking, oh, it's just a mascara. Like I'll definitely use it, but I don't think I'll fall in love with it. And I was wrong. I'm in love. I'm so mad about it too, because this is freaking expensive. This is just a mini size. How much does the full size retail for? I'm usually not one for high-end mascaras. This is $37 hurts my soul. $37 for a mascara. I don't know if I would pay it. I really don't. That being said, if I had like a Sephora sale or something, maybe I would pick this up if it was like 20% off, even though 20% off 37 isn't that much, but like at least it's something and I really do like this product. The mini is $18. Like that's still even like crazy. And I still really like my drugstore mascaras, but this is just so unique. I feel like this is the only high-end mascara where I can actually, I could rationalize it in my head and I could justify the purchase. Any other high-end mascara, I'm like, no, no thank you. I'll go to CoverGirl. Whereas this, I would use this over CoverGirl in a heartbeat. I just, I don't know if I'm willing to pay $37, but I feel like my brain could definitely find a way to rationalize it. So yeah, overall, I love this. Will I repurchase it? I don't know, because it's really expensive and mascara only lasts three months. I'm pretty good at getting rid of my mascara at the three month mark. This one might be an exception. I might like hoard this for a while because I'm kind of attached to it. But for the most part, I'm really good at getting rid of my mascaras and $37 for three months, especially for someone like me who wears fake lashes whenever I do makeup. Whenever I do my makeup, I'm most likely wearing fake lashes. So is this really worth it? Yes, I'm clearly going through a really strong conflict in my head about whether I would repurchase this or not, but the moral of the story is maybe if I had a gift card. Yeah, I would definitely go for this if I had a gift card. I'm just thinking of all these scenarios and when I could get my paws on this for not $37 because it is just so good. So good, would highly recommend if you're looking for a good mascara and you have like a gift card or you wanna treat yourself to something more luxurious, I would highly recommend this. I don't think you'll be disappointed unless you don't like the rubberized wands. The wand can be a little bit spiky this is what it looks like, but overall I really enjoy it. If you don't like these types of wands, then obviously maybe this isn't the mascara for you. But if you like those kinds of wands, I personally do. I would recommend this if you're looking for something a little more luxe. And lastly for eyes, we have a pair of falsies. These are by ColourPop. I talk all the time about how much I love ColourPop false lashes and how much I feel they're underrated. We need justice for ColourPop lashes. These are the Disney Bambi falsies and these are in the style oh dear I'm wearing them today I just think they're really flattering and this one is popping off my inner corner fantastic I love that for me I love this style I feel like it's super flattering on my eye shape I just think that these are so beautiful I would highly recommend them I don't know if they'd be good for people who don't have a lot of lid space it's so hard to say it's so hard to say what a particular lash style will look like on different eye shapes but regardless if you're not into a style like this maybe go for something more natural color pop lashes are still really good for natural styles as well I just think they're so good and they're only seven dollars that's like Ardell pricing I just feel a lot more luxe using a color pop lash than an Ardell. I don't know why that is. It's definitely packaging. That's the uh, difference there, but I just love these. I think they're really, really pretty. Since I did mention Ardell, I just want to quickly shout out these lashes because I've been really enjoying these as well. These are the Ardell Foam Ink in the style 812. You might think to yourself, Kelsey, why is there only one lash used? That's because I turn these into half lashes. So these have little clusters on them and there are 18 of those clusters. So I count to nine and that'll be right in the center of the lash. Flip 
those in half and then you have little half lashes and you double how much lash you get because you get one pair for each lash. So you get two pairs per set of lashes. I really like that little trick. I posted a TikTok on it. I'll have the link down below if you want to follow me on TikTok. I have a lot of fun there. So yeah, that's my little hack. I've been doing that a lot lately because half lashes are super in and this is how I've been doing it. Instead of purchasing your own half lashes, you can just make them very easily too. Okay, and I am finally on my last category, lips. We're almost done, I swear. I feel like this is a long video already. The first product I wanna talk about is from Bite and it is their Line and Define Lip Primer. I just really like using this as a lip primer. That's what I use it for. It's minty and I really like that. I find it provides a little bit of hydration, but it's not super, like it's not a super slippery balm. It's very stiff and waxy. So when you apply a lip color over top of it, it doesn't slide around or move all over your face. So yeah, I really like this product. I think it's great. It's just like a lip balm, but a little bit stiffer. So it really preps my lips for any lip color that I'm going to apply on top of it. I'm wearing it today. I know it doesn't really matter probably because you're not going to notice a difference, but I am wearing it today. So also, so it kind of tingles because it's a little minty and I really like that. If you don't like mint, maybe don't pick this up. It's not crazy minty though. And yeah, I really enjoyed this product. If you're looking for a lip balm to put on before your lip color and other ones are just like too slippy or too thin or too oily, this is definitely a really good um, option. It just provides a little bit of hydration and a little bit of smoothness without making your lip color run. Really, that's it. This product is also kind of new, so I feel bad talking about it, but I already know that I love it because I I've used it every single day since I got it. And since I tried it, this is by KKW Beauty. It's the lip liner in the shade Nude One. Wearing it today, really love this color. It's amazing. If you can find it at your local Ulta, would highly recommend it. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to find it because there's some weird stuff going on with the Kardashian beauty brands right now. I don't know why I always swatch it on this inner part of my hand. So I'm always having to get in weird positions to show you, but this is a swatch of it right here. Kim just does nude shades really, really well. I find that since that's like more of her signature look, I feel like she just, she knows what a good nude lipstick is. And the range on these is phenomenal. They have quite a few nude shades that range from very, very light to very, very deep. I've only tried the one, so I can only speak for this one, but the formula is really nice. I really enjoy it. I hope that they're keeping these. Like I know there's some weird stuff going on with KKW right now, but I hope that they keep their lip liners because I really want to include them in my kit and I think they're really good. And I feel like they're reasonably priced too. Like they're not a bad price point. And finally, the last product I want to talk about is by Tower 28 again. It is the Shine On Lip Jelly in the shade Cashew. This is like the milky lip jelly ones. It's really nice. I really like it. The only thing is someone pointed this out in the Sephora reviews and now I like can't unsmell it. Someone said that it smells like copper and I can't not smell it now. It kind of has a vanilla smell, but also like a copper under smell. Like it's, it's very weird, but it's not strong. So I'm not wearing it today, but now I am. I just, such a pretty color, such a nice formula, not long wearing whatsoever, but still really nice. It's very moisturizing, very hydrating, very thin, not at all sticky. It's what I'm looking for in a gloss because I personally don't care if a gloss is long wearing or not. I usually wipe it off before it wears off anyway. So I just really enjoy this product. I don't mind having to reapply it. That means I'll go through it quicker for sure, but I have a hard time using up lip products anyways. So I don't mind that. I like when I use up products. I feel like I've really gotten my my money's worth that way. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. I would highly recommend it. It's very nice. If you've been eyeing these, I would recommend. And that is it for me today. I think, I think that's all the products I wanted to talk about. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite products have been lately. I'm really curious to know. I'm always on the hunt for new good products and I would love to try out some of your favorites. Ooh, I feel like that could be a fun video, like testing out my subscribers' favorite products. That would be really fun. Okay, leave it in the comments down below and I'll see if I can make it happen in the near future. And yeah, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It helps out my channel so very much by you watching, so thank you. Please leave any video requests you may have in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.